everybody here today. I just finished with Bob Beeman right there. I finished with, with JJ over here. And then we had Di and we had his coach. And so I want to give your perspective as fans, as fans from way back in that time. I was one of them. So, so are you ready? You're rolling? So, first of all, tell me your names and, um, and uh, tell me your names. David Emi and El Paso. Okay. My name's Irene Emi Duran. I'm the daughter of David Emi. How do you spell the last name? I am A I. Okay. All right. So now, uh, tell us who you are. Well, we're just here, loyal El Paso, born and raised here. All my family, and ever since uh, I got out of the Air Force in '58, I started supporting UTEP sports at football, track, and basketball. That's what I've been, a UTEP faithful follower of sports. That's who I am. And I, it runs into the family, I guess. Right. My dad has always um, had us participate in sports, uh, track, and my brother's all in golf right now. And we've just been all just doing the best that we can in, in, um, in sports. You know, we, we went to Healy with the Brookses, our, our coaches. We went to Ross with, with Fisbeck, and we went to Burgess with McCutcheon as our coach. And uh, we've just been we real good supporters of track and, and, and football and basketball. And Lady Miners are so proud of him. And he's going to continue supporting the Miners. That, and also at that time that my oh! kids were going to Burgess High School, in fact, Ross Vandenberg, Wayne Vandenberg's younger son, he was a track coach for my son, and my son got to be a, have a great coach there. Unfortunately for him, he went to, to district, they won district, and they went to state. Unfortunately, they didn't put good in state, but at least we got coached by one of the best track coaches in the city, Russell Vandenberg. And, uh, he went to uh, state in 80? In 80. 79 and 80. And, uh, we've been just a faithful follower. I'm just a fan of UTEP. That's all I am. Me and my family. Faithful followers of football, basketball, and track. That's all we are. I think what brings back a lot of tears, I've been crying all, all day, is I was telling JJ Jackson, is just seeing you all again. Even though I was 10 or 12 years old back then, um, just brings back such great, great memories, and we appreciate you coming back. That's great. So, and you remembered us. Yes. As soon as I saw Harold Jackson coming up, I didn't recognize him, but I saw this uh, this uh, jersey. You, I mean, this T-shirt you're wearing there. And I says, I remember that year. And I says, you know, I read a lot of some names. And says, you read a lot. You read a lot of Harold Williams. She says, you know who I am? I says, no, but uh, I think you might be one of those guys. He says, I'm Harold Williams, a member of the Pro Bowling Relay Team. And sure enough, I hit it right on those. I've just been following you guys home more. And I remember you, the name Paul Cohen. I remember you. You, you used to run dashes too. Dashes. Yeah. Yeah. You're a sprint guy. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we are. We just, here we are. And, uh, too bad that they don't, they don't have 10,000 people like we had it back at your time. That's all. I just. I'm glad I got to see all these former faces that I was used to see. Well, I gotta say that everybody on the team really appreciates you guys. We really, really, it's just a so big surprise, unexpected, that we would meet you here. And, and which is what's happening with everybody. We all, like, people came from all over the world for this thing, and we didn't expect to see them again. And here we are last night with about 120 people that were just like, wow, it's like the, an episode of the Twilight Zone. You know? <laughs> we haven't seen each other in all these years, and now here we are, we see you, you know, and it's just a wonderful thing for, for everybody. You know, we did this. We, we, we put a lot of effort into coming here. I, can, I bet you did, but I bet it was a great re reunion with you at the, at the place where you all met at the reception last yes. night. Yes. And I'm just tickled pink that to hear that, that you all had a great time here. Yeah. I'm just happy for you all that, you know, here you are, what is it, uh, 40 years later, yeah. something like that, yeah. and you're back here reminiscing with your old teammates, and here I am reminiscing with the guys I used to share for, you know, that's just something.
something awesome. That's all I can say. You know, tonight we're having this barbecue after this meet and then drinks back at the hotel. And I'd like to invite you to come back. If you can do it, come, come by and just join everybody there as representatives of the fans. The fans of all fans. So, I think that would be a good thing. I haven't talked to Russ Vandenberg about it, but I think it'd be a fun, okay? I don't want you to know, but it's going to be at the, at the Hilton Garden Inn. Uh, I'm not quite sure, I'll let you know. Okay? It'd be really good to have you there. Thank you for the memory. Thank you so much for giving us back so many good memories. I really appreciate you coming forward. Okay, thank you. Good, all right, I'll let you know. Okay, ready? Rolling and speed. JJ. Yes, sir. How you doing today, man? Hey, man, fantastic. Here for the reunion, having a great time, seeing a lot of my old buddies, and so it's all worth it. It's all worth it. So, what's it like picking up the conversation after 40 years with all these guys? Hey, man, it's like we just didn't leave here just yesterday, man. It's been fantastic. What's some of the surprises about, about these people that you're just meeting up with again after 40 years? What's some surprise guys? Well, the main thing is that uh, we lost a lot of guys through just passing from old age and just having some fatal issues that took their lives. So that part of it I'm very disappointed about. But the other guys that we had now that are here now, Fred DiBernardi, Steve Pullen, a bunch of my wonderful buddies, man, this is nice to just reconnect with these guys. Yeah. Our legacy was interrupted maybe 40 some years ago and now to get back together and do all this man it is wonderful it's fantastic yeah tell, tell me about that um interruption tell yeah. me tell, tell me tell me about uh what we were what we achieved back then at that in that moment there was a brief period of time and then we took a lot of that and it changed but now we're able to really build it back again in another way so tell me how, how you feel about that well you know what i think the legacy was kind of interrupted because things happened unexpectedly a lot of people went different directions no one knew what happened to a lot of individuals some people went back overseas to australia new zealand and various places because when vandenberg left we kind of left too kind of so it left everything in a way where we didn't really know what was going to happen and now that this has come about, this reunion, man, it's so wonderful to see these guys and just to talk to them about some of the things we accomplished in track and field, here at UTAP especially. What are some of the surprises, standouts about the guys that you, you meet now and the, their accomplishments since then that you just had no idea? Uh, it's amazing because a lot of guys are, became very infamous for their famous track and field. But track and field was only part of it because I think the continuity that we had, the camaraderie, and things of that nature is what we miss most. And what I found out was that friendship is everything because these guys went to war with me on a regular basis. We were in the WAC Western Athletic Conference and we won the majority of the track meets. We had world record holders. We had guys that uh, Olympic, Bob Beeman. So it, the list just goes on and on, you know. So my thing is that friendship forever and getting back with them and making sure that everybody's good. I'm happy about just being here for the moment. Okay. What about the coach? Tell me about your uh, feelings about Coach Vandenberg and what his contribution to your life. Well, Wayne Vandenberg to me kind of saved me because a lot of people are not aware of that. I went to Vietnam prior coming here to UTAP. And when I left, I had to, send, to spend about two years of my life in the military service in Vietnam. And so when I got back, there were not that many scholarships on the table for me. Wayne Vandenberg came through, offered me a scholarship. And personally, I didn't think I still had it, but I found out I did. So I'm happy. And that's why my relationship with Wayne, as, as is today, is the best relationship I could ever have from a coach to an actual athlete. So is there anything else that you haven't said or would like to say, uh, you know, publicly uh, that hasn't been said yet about this whole event and this whole thing? Well, one thing for sure. I think that coming here at UTEP, we found out that our legacy was not imprinted in any of the history. So to come back now and to allow them to see us as we are and to find out some of our accomplishments, I think has made a tremendous amount of difference. I think now that we can probably get back, connect our legacy, and also be part of the history of UTAP track and field. So that's one thing that I hope will happen now that we're here and part of something greater than we ever, ever expected. Okay, that's um, So I can't do it without including you. <laughs> so I want to ask you just a few questions and um, get you on tape. Okay. Um, 
Ready? Yep. Okay. So, tell me about um, the impact of Utah on your life since Utah. Tell me, just reflect on that for a second. I think uh, this facility uh, has produced quite a few NC2A champions, but also, of course, I was here training uh, and represented uh, Utah uh, and won a gold medal. Uh, I think there's been quite a few successful stories here. Uh, we got trained here and also competition have set records here. So I think this uh, pit field is a wonderful place to be hanging out. Yeah. And after uh, 40, 40 some years, uh, it even looks better. So you finding that um, that the, the legacy that we all left behind has looking at this today it looks like it's in pretty good shape. We've got a vibrant program, and now we have girls working out and running and everything. I mean, talk about you know your feelings about that legacy. Well, as I said, you know we. <clears throat> I feel good that we were pioneers of the program. Um, a lot of things were not in place. However, we uh, were the guys that always said, put mind over matter. And uh, we came through uh, wholeheartedly and, and spiritually, uh, our team was intact together with each other. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the jump a little bit. I think we talk about that. And from a spiritual point of view, and how you, um, I mean, I, talk, I, I work with a lot of musicians, famous people, and they tell me that it's not their music, it's just, it just flows through them, right? Was that jump, or something like that for you? I mean, was it something that happened that was like, you were surprised by it? And, 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 and that it was something that came out of you that you knew was sort of there, but you were just saying, you just have to well, talk about that jump. One of, the, one of the great things about sports is that um, a lot of times those kinds of uh, performances come when you least expect them. But what you have to do is you have to be ready to perform at any given time uh, and to be at a level where you win the competition or do something very special. Now, I didn't go into the Olympic Games uh, thinking that I was going to break any records, but I did think that I was going to win. So, uh, it was going to say, uh, what I want to say is that when you do jump, or when you do run, you run to win. You don't necessarily go in to break the record. There's too much things going at one time. So, uh, when I jumped uh, 29 feet, uh, I got everything at one time. And so, uh, I was somewhat uh, shocked in a sense, but uh, felt very good about the accomplishment. Um, do you want to talk about uh, the boycott of uh, BYU? Uh, 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 I, I can I can probably make some comment on that. I mean, I think it's important at this point in time, since yeah. we're now at a different point in, in history, in general. Yeah. And um, looking back on that, um, I mean, I know Tommy Smith has done college for a He was normal as a team man in Australia, so I know how much they paid for it. So I want to hear, I want to really, I mean, this person I can hear from you, how, well, how you felt about it. Well, here uh, in El Paso, I think uh, during that time, I think of the entire town, city, the county, we were all trying to understand the change that was coming. Because what was happening was that you were having uh, uh, protest all around the country, uh, in some parts of the world. Uh, every time you look up, there was a protest going on. And so uh, they described Dallas as black power. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the 
boycott in 1968, which we didn't do. Uh, the uh, fortunate thing is that we competed and um, we assembled the greatest track and field team ever. Here uh, in uh, El Paso, uh, we took a stand with uh, BYU. Uh, and, and the most interesting thing uh, happened was that um, there was basically some policies that needed to be changed, were old and out of date. And so we uh, hurried it up so that they could update their, uh, their changes. <laughs> um, I think that we made a big difference in BYU's change. And then also the conference that we were in, they followed suit with the change. So, I think we lost our scholarship, and it wasn't because of uh, Ghost Vandenberg, but, you know, knowing how the administration works, the business works, you know, the person that's on top could have been the AD, could have been uh, the president or whatever. They put pressure on, 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 on the coach, and so, which is uh, sometimes unfair. And so, but we made a decision, and we stuck with our decision. And I think that it made a difference, not only here, but also in the conference, too. Mm -hmm. Very courageous. <coughs> courageous thing. Okay. Um, so just a general thing now um, to wrap this up. What um, what else would, would you like to say that hasn't wasn't said last night that was that you'd like to say about this whole reunion of this, this team coming back together again? I, I think uh, I think it's important that we again this is probably just the beginning and the surface of possibly having. Uh, a reunion of all the sports uh, having to come back. I think it would, it would create uh, an incredible interest in this town. It would probably raise a lot of money too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that right? Sure. Yeah, that's good. Cool. <laughs> oh, man. Balls, man. Don't do that. <laughs> I had a hard up time last night when that girl was interviewing me. That was crazy. Yeah, I know. I couldn't hear. I didn't understand what the stuff she was telling me. All right, so here's what we're doing. Okay. We're doing. We're, you know, we're making this other little film here about the owl event, right? And and these guys are collecting everything up. So okay. I'm trying to get interviews with as many people as I can. Okay. And then I'm only going to be able to do a couple myself. And you right. one. Right. So I want I want you to ask you a couple of questions. First question is. What does this whole thing mean to you? I mean, picking up the conversation from 40 years ago, and here we're all these assholes back here again, and here we're all back together again, and suddenly it's kind of, like I said last night, it's kind of like an episode of Twilight Zone. Yeah, it's all really back together. And it, it, it's, what's rough about it is you, you, don't, you don't recognize some of the guys, but they recognize you, you know, and you're going like, okay, but it's like Twilight Zone, you know, but... Uh, then you don't have enough time to spend with the guy because you're, you know, you're trying to remember the, the old days like we did this, we did this and that, you know, together and yeah. how we got, you know. But, you know, it's, it's you just don't have enough time to, to talk to everybody, you know, you take right. pictures and all this. Right. It's, it's, it's hard because you, you're trying to re remember the good old days, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, that's, I just, it, you know, I can't be amazed on how some of these guys that have teams, you know, yeah. just got, we all got a little bit old, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, it's good to see all these guys. It's good to see Vandenberg and Corky and all these guys. You know, mess with JJ. Uh, there's some guys that I wish had been here that didn't come, you know what I'm saying? And that that would have made it a lot better too, but this this is great. I mean, it was, like I say, it was it was nuts last night at that bank. It was crazy. It was so many folks who want to talk to you. Yeah. So. so now tell me about um, what's happened to you in your life since then and how um, our experience back then helped you or you know, impacted your life, inspired well, yeah, you. Okay. Uh, the, 
when I got out of UTEP and we went into that pro track at ITA, I was in that for about three years. But that started, you know, the popularity for track and field is not as like it used to be. I don't, you know, it's, yeah. it's tough. And uh, of course, now in this day and age, everything is computers and, you know, Facebooks and iPads and laptops and all that stuff. We didn't have any of that stuff over here. You know, we didn't have anything. Yeah. But uh, after that, I just I got out of the track thing and it was done. I moved around the country. You know, I was all over the place working in different areas. Started out in the oil field in New Mexico, and then I went from there to Albuquerque, and I went back, went up to Las Vegas. So I've been there for 19 years. So other than that, everything's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, so tell me about Van Vandenberg. What does he mean to you? He was a trip. He would. Uh, I'm say, sitting. I'm say, sitting. Say Van. That's a Van. Had Vandenberg put Vandenberg's name in it. Okay. Vandenberg, he was a trip. He would, he called me at my house out in California, and I didn't know who he was. And uh, my folks were eating dinner, so they said, get a phone call. So I get on the phone, he goes, hey, this is Wayne Vandenberg from El Paso, Texas. I don't know where El Paso is at. Yeah. And I'm going like, yeah, and he goes, yeah, he says, we're, we're going to come out and visit you. He says, really, I'd like to recruit you to come to school here and all that. And, uh, I got off the phone with him. I had to go look at an atlas and try and figure out where the hell El Paso was at. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they were yeah. in California. I didn't know. Yeah. So, but there was guys like Paul Hegler, uh, Gary Maziotti, Scott English, Danny T. I said Paul Hegler, right? He went, there was a bunch of guys, Kerry Ellison, you know, all these guys from California I knew about because we all were in the CIF Southern section, yeah. and we all competed yeah. against the other schools. You know? yeah, yeah. We come to find out that all these California guys were coming. So that was one of the reasons I, I wanted to come here. He was building a hell of a track team. It was, it was going to be some competition. Yeah. So, and it turned out to be pretty, pretty good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of fun, though. So tell me about what you achieved on the track team. What's that? What, what were your big major, major achievements on the track team? Out of that? What were your I mean, you've records and you have uh, yeah. your championships, so what were they? I came in second in 1970 as a sophomore to uh, John Van Reen and the discus. They didn't expect me to do that. And then uh, I was 71, I came in second again. And 72, I won the shot and discus title. And uh, that's pretty much the culmination of my, you know, career here. But, uh, what about the records? What oh, records I still are... hold the indoor record, the indoor shot record for okay. Utah. Yeah. Um, and at that time, we had a salt, meet in Salt Lake City with some WAC championships. And I was uh, an inch and a half off the world indoor record in, in Salt Lake City. Al Feuerbach in the total inch and a half further than me, so that was kind of exciting, you know, so, yeah. but, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, we went everywhere, there was big name track people, and we showed up, and we were right in the thick of it all times, so, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> So, uh, and I have no idea what we're going to do with all this stuff. It's like we're just going to collect it. We're going to collect it right to begin with. So we figure out what we're going to do with it. Someone's going to come up. We're going to come up with a mind of nature. In, our, our, in 10 years, when we get back together again, <laughs> none of us can see, we can, we can show the movie. In mean, 25 years, and we're all so dead. Yeah, right. They'll be digging it up. Like the, be kids will, the kids will go, God, there's a bunch of old parts out there. <laughs> it's an archive. <laughs> All right, hit it. Hit it. You rolling? Yep. Before we get blown out of here. Yes. All right, so first of all, I want to start with the fact that you guys were together in Van Nuys. Correct. Which I happen to know. Went to high school together, yes. So talk about first how you got to El Paso. Well, right, first of all, tell your name. Kerry Maciotti from Van Nuys. <laughs> Kerry Ellison from the same neighborhood. All right, so tell us about how you got to get that after the Well, Kerry's the leader on that one. But, uh, yeah, Kerry is the leader on that one. Yeah, I got recruited to come here, and uh, Gary uh, got recruited to go somewhere else. 
And fortunately, just before I came to El Paso and we loaded up the car to come here, uh, he came back from that school. And I called Wayne and I said, uh, you know, Gary didn't work out in uh, Nebraska, right? Yeah, Wayne State, Nebraska. And I said, uh, so I'm, I'm bringing him with me. And uh, so we came down together and started school together. And we ran all the way through high school and ran all the way through college. And we're still running from the law. I mean, no, we're still running. Well, the true Hello. story, that, that's the, the true story is that Wayne recruited the, the, the star mileage from that LA. And, um, and he didn't want to run cross country. So he took me with him to run cross country for him. So in 1969. And that's the reason I'm still here. <laughs> Because he ran cross country. I ran, I ran cross country. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, during that '69 year, we, um, we we won a national national championship in uh, New York City in Portland Park, 19, November 24th, 1969. First semester in school. First, yeah. And so and he's an NCAA champion. Yeah, yeah. Not too shabby. And my first recruit. Yeah. So first Wayne, recruit. take a back seat, buddy. I Wayne, got you. Wayne, Wayne got a twofer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and and then we can do from there. Yeah, you got, you got half mile miler and then just in a cross country game. All right, so what happened after that? After all. After the NCAA championship. I mean, that's just the beginning. It's all downhill. Uh, <laughs> for Kerry, 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 Kerry was all American and, and, and uh, 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 he had, what was it, two, two mile relay indoors. He was all American. Yeah. He won the NCAA that year, 1971. Uh, he ran under for a minute for a mile. <laughs> Yeah. And won the whack and a half in the mile. Back in when I was younger. So, that's stupid. It's like yeah. we all are, right? Well, well, but I remember it like yesterday. Right. So. <laughs> I tell you about that. I mean, this whole thing, like, it's a twilight zone, right? I mean, here we are looking at each other and going, it's like, it's like, tell me about how you felt about it last night, meeting everybody for the first time. Well, I think it's uh, I think it's a lot of fun just to uh, go back and conjure up the memories. And most of these guys remember a lot more than I do. I don't know why, but the, the memories are a lot of fun. And, and comparing notes has really been a guess. It's been a lot of fun. What well, was fun for me was, was picking up relationships that I haven't seen in over 40 years and, and, and saying some of the same things that we used to say 40 years ago <laughs> that we really wouldn't have said if we just met them today. And uh, it's like a conversation just picked right up from, from where, where you left off 40 years. And the friendships picked yeah. up right up. Yeah. Is there anything about uh, the guys that surprises you or anything like that? Some, some surprises of anybody in particular you want to name? Yeah, they're just as ugly as they were then. <laughs> For the most part, <laughs> no surprises. Other than that, I think everybody looks better than I would have guessed. I think, yeah, they're more fit. Um, they, 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 I recognized almost everybody, which kind of surprised me. And I was, uh, was surprised last night. One of the biggest surprises for me was uh, the amount of athletes that, that wanted to come back um, that came from quite a few miles away to get here and had to make a big effort to take part, uh, whether or not they were here for four or five years or just one year. Um, and, and Wayne had that big of an impact on everyone where they all wanted to come back and, um, and see the man with the most confidence that we've ever met in our life, probably. And <laughs> <I> still is. <laughs> yeah, well, let's just tell, talk about that for a second. Tell me about um, um, the impact that Vandenberg had on all of our lives and what sort of things he instilled in us that allowed us to be who we are today and what we achieved. The, the biggest memory I have is, the, is his belief in me uh, when I really didn't believe in me. He gave me some opportunities to run. Uh, like my freshman year, uh, I should never have gone to the conference meet, and he took me. And I was uh, the fourth man uh, for us in the mile and, uh, and ran a PR by eight seconds. You know, I ran a 406 as a freshman, and I shouldn't even been at that meet. So I, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. I qualified for nationals as a freshman, and that wouldn't have happened if he didn't step up and, uh, and believe in me. And uh, I learned a lot from that. It was, and it was a big turning point in my running career, and it frankly kept me in college and you know, got me to where I got a couple of degrees and went on and did some things. So it's a big difference. You know, I think Wayne's um, biggest influence on a lot of us was that he was able to increase our confidence and our ability by 25, 30 percent just because he was so confident. And uh, and you and you didn't you didn't want to let him down, you know. And that was um, that was a big part of the mental attitude that we all had. We did, he worked so hard at it, you know. We uh, we didn't want to let him down, and he was so confident wherever we went, and he told everybody what we were going to do. <laughs> 
just to hear whether we did it or not. <laughs> yeah. And if we were in trouble, he was there to bail us out. You know, and um, anyway, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a good situation. It was a, sometimes a tough situation, but it was uh, a growing situation. We all appreciate it more now than we did way back in the day. Yeah. I really felt like we put UTEP on the map, and, and, and to be able to do that with a, on a national level in track and field was, was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and you know, Wayne was all of that. It was entirely him. He did it single-handedly with a whole bunch of athletes. But he, it was him that he, he pulled that off. And that's, that's very impressive to take something from really nothing. I think there were seven or eight athletes returning from the year before I came here. Yeah. And uh, the next year, you know, we win an NCAA championship and we're, we're contending over the top three in the country year in and year out. Pretty impressive. A lot of people say, uh, but, you know, happy the fact that um, there's been such a gap and that most of what we or you guys did has been forgotten or actually erased from the record. Do you think that's just because time passed or because things change and because the 40, 40 years is a long time in, in everybody's world? I, I kind of disagree with that. I think that um, what we did is we planted the seed for all of the success that's come since us. Uh, without that, I don't think that the recruiting could have happened, the success they had, and all the NCAA championships they put together. Um, I, I don't think it would have happened. Uh, so without that start, without that uh, that that confidence that UTEP track had, anywhere you went in the country, you, know, you were proud to wear that shirt. Uh, and that all started with this group. Yeah, there was a mystique around the country about what was going on in El Paso. And, and, and so it was uh, to, to recruit uh, to, to El Paso, Texas, and uh, University of Texas, El Paso. Um, it, with that reputation, it made you curious, so you'd come out. And then with the national titles and with the magic of all the distance runners and NC2A championships, it was enticing for an athlete to want to say, okay, I'm coming. So then when you get here, it's about the community's really warm, it's about the people um, and your teammates and your coach. And um, I just do them. What you came here to do? Well, I can see it here today. I mean, there's a very vibrant track meet going on here. I mean, they don't have 15,000 people in the grand stage. But a lot of people are on the track. Yep. Right? And good, and good performance. Good performance. Yeah. So that's that stuff. Right, right, right. Thanks, Steve. I'm done. Yeah. Let me hold your better hand. Bob Demon, please. Huh? I know his name. What, that's okay. Um, that ain't doing us too. No, 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 my tongue. I'm on. You know how you you have a name you can try to throw it out. You know. I'm the same all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a couple of French national uh, sprinters. Really? Here. Yeah. Yeah. those French athletes. French sprinters. Nice. Very good. Yeah, strong. That was pretty fast, 10.56. Yeah. Not as good as I thought, but I, it's hard to tell if they're running into the wind or against the wind. It's really good. I'm surprised it wasn't faster than that. Yeah, okay. So, um, one, just one more question. The question is, um, while, while we were doing this, back in the day. Did you really have any idea about all these unintended consequences and how the, the, the you know, learning how, like you said, we all learn together, but learning how to how to uh, fight for things and never give up and how to win and how to lose and all these things and have, have to lessons in life. Did you, did you have any idea that was going to be a big part of it? Because it also influenced your life and your career afterwards now. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, but you know, it was part of my DNA. You know, my mother, my mother and father instilled a couple of things into me. Uh, you know, uh, my mother always used to say, you know, if you tell the truth, you won't forget what you said, number one. And, and always, you know, my mother used to instill in me as a child, uh, you can be anything you want to be. You know, there's nobody, there's no restraints on you as a, uh, as a human being or as a, as a person. And I've always had tremendous confidence no matter what. Um, uh, and, and, I, and I always spoke from the heart. And I think that probably rubbed off on people, and hopefully in a positive vein, um, because I just spoke to what I felt. You know, uh, you know, 
things, you know, if you said, could you wind things back and would you have done anything differently? You know, probably not. You might have, you might have, the execution may have been different, you know, but I, I'm, I'm a very happy guy. I mean, I've always been a very happy guy, you know. Uh, if things don't go well, you can't sit back and dwell. I've never been one to dwell upon what if or, you know, looking back. Looking back is only to improve the future. You cannot dwell on the past. You've got, you know, today is today and tomorrow is a new challenge. And you have to be ready for that every day. And, I, and hopefully I prepared everybody for that. Because I didn't want to talk about, you know, I would talk about what we didn't do that we could do better to improve on the future, but not dwell upon, well, you know, you know, still talking about something that happened a year ago or two years ago or a week ago. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it was the hurdler, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh, I don't know. Okay. 1091. All right, I think I'll let these guys okay. get that turn. Okay. Thank you, bro. You're welcome. Thursday. Good to see you. I'm going to be right here. You got it? I'm sitting here. All right. You ready? Rolling. Yep. Speed. Action. <laughs> so you have to look at me. All right. So, Coach. Tell me about this weekend and how it's going so far for you. Well, I think it's a wonderful occasion. Uh, uh, I reference it by saying that it's like there was a conversation that started 40 years ago and is being finished without a pause this weekend yeah. with everybody. I mean, the, uh, the integration of everybody into their lives, what they've done over the last 40 years, uh, exchanging war stories from the days of competition uh, to the things that they've done, their children, their grandchildren, whatever it may be. I mean, it's just one of the most wonderful events that I've ever been part of. And I'm really happy to be here. Good, okay, hold that thought. Now make sure, yeah, she's not in the picture, right? She's not in the picture. Okay, good, thank you. Oh, even though you're wonderful. It's not my first rodeo. You are wonderful. Thank not, you. Not Charles's first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> Not his first rodeo, huh? Yeah. All right, so now let's ask another question. Um, that's good. Um, what would you like to say about it that you haven't said so far this weekend, about this whole thing? Well, what, what we really, I think, all came to better understand is that we grew together through all these experiences. I was, when I arrived here in 1966, I was 24 years old. And one of the young men that I had the opportunity to coach, uh, Rich Spordoni, uh, was older than I was when I arrived here. So um, it was a wonderful occasion uh, for everybody to be here to exchange and understand that everything we did, it wasn't about me, it wasn't about them, it was about we, together, collectively, and the experiences we shared, the maturities that we gained, uh, the good, the not so good, the wins, those when we didn't win, you know, and the experiences we shared, and uh, um, the things that we'll, we'll take on and pass on to others, and we've shared it with a lot of UTEP athletes uh, and coaches, and we shared stories that not all of us have, had heard before. So it's really a wonderful time to commiserate and, uh, and for us to understand that, that uh, we were growing together through this experience. It was just the evolution of who we are today and where we've been and where we're going. Because we're surely not finished. We've got a lot more to contribute. That's true. So now, um, what surprises you most about some of these guys? Any standouts that you can think of that this is like a big surprise that you can't believe this guy turned into this or whatever? He's mentioned a couple of names. Well, the success stories, I mean, are just unbelievable. From Bill DeFusco, who only spent a year here, but felt that he had to come back and participate. He was here as a freshman and then left and joined the Marine Corps and then spent a lot of time with the company, <laughs> the CIA and intelligence services and high security, country security, 
um, Glenn Trobel, who needed some assistance when he got here as a walk-on athlete, and we got him a work-study job in the Department of Physics, and he er ends up becoming a physicist and get his, a, gets his master's degree and his PhD in physics and puts men on the moon and works with all types of, you know, in with the Russians in collaborating with the space program uh, to Clarence Duke. And I'm talking about three athletes, that, three participants that never had any success at all on the track and field. And Clarence is with the National Institute of Health in Washington. I mean, I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. wonderful, you know, situations. Les Miller to being the chairman of the the uh, uh, utility commission of the country of the bah you know the Bahamas and being a former congressman and Robert Bethea running for Congress in the 20th war or the 20th district of California. I mean, it's just on and on and on and you know Bob Beeman. We don't have to talk about Bob's success or Steve Poland's success or, or Ron Rondo's success or Chuck Bright's or. Harold Williams or whoever. I mean, it's just one after another success stories. And, and that's what is more important than all the achievements and the accomplishments that were made on the track. On the track. But, you know, education and grandchildren and children and contribution to society and, and spreading the legacy, so to speak. You know? It just... It's, it's heartwarming. And my son getting an opportunity to hear these stories last night, you know, things that I didn't tell him, you know. Yeah. It almost sounds boisterous if you tell him yeah. these things. Yeah. For him to see it and feel it yeah. and live it firsthand is yeah. a great thing. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's it. I mean, I, and with other un unintended consequences, you know, like that, where you've got here some fans who came up to us and knew who we were from 40 years ago. We have um, you know, other people that we just knew who were maybe uh, like you know, part of the uh, organizing committees or the team umpires or whatever. Right. You know? They were. Our, they they helped run the track meets. Right. They were the officials and yeah. so forth. And you know, all of those them. things. Yeah. yeah. All of those things. You know, it's just part of the entire package. It's like the alphabet, yeah. A to Z. You know, it's. It's every piece and part and parcel to yeah. the whole, the entire experience. You know, seeing what the track and field facility yeah. is today from where it started. We had uh, my last year, it was 1972, and we put in the first artificial track uh, at that time. And, uh, um, and where it is today yeah. and you know Mika doing a great job here with the program and, yeah. and you know sharing these experiences with their with the staff last night with the coaching staff and then we're going to integrate with yeah. all the UTEP athletes tonight at our at our barbecue good, yeah. so it's you know these are yeah. just wonderful stories you know and, uh, all of us you know sort of uh, busting one another's humps about our bellies you know <laughs> It's a wonderful, wonderful experience uh, for all of us. But the camaraderie, as, as I said, it's like we started a conversation 40 years ago and we're finishing it this weekend with no lapse, no no interim time, you know? Nothing changed, you know? It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Just an unbelievable experience. I've never experienced anything like this before. John Carlos calling last night, you know? Skype calls to our to our brethren, to our to our teammates in in Australia last night, and guys coming from Sweden, India, Australia, Sweden, I mean Spain, um, you know, unbelievable, and all over all over the country, and guys that spent a year here felt compelled to come back, you know, and didn't maybe didn't even graduate, here, but felt still part of the program, so. It's uh, a wonderful thing. It's a great legacy. I don't want you to miss the next race because it's 100 and stuff coming up. But I have okay. one other question. Sure. So I'll just make sure if this race starts, we're going to do the race. Okay? So maybe I'll stand over here. You want me to stand here? No, we can stand, okay. we can stand there. It's okay.